morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, guys, five amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, another indicator that will tell you guys when the bull market top is in. Also, of course, some travel advice, answering two questions of the followers. One question is stating that real estate is good, and the other question was stating that Bitcoin will never have adoption. I will give my answer to that. And of course, talking about news is something really cool that's happening in the United States and ending the video with an inspirational quote. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what is happening to Bitcoin today. The first chart for today, guys, is the four hour chart. On this four hour chart, you can, can see clear that since March, since here in the end of February, beginning of March, still over here, we have been going sideways, consolidating. Here, this peak to the bottom is manipulation in my honest opinion. Now, if we draw that line over here, you can see the tops, lower tops, lower tops. We broke out of this uh, and we retested this. I believe now that we will go up from here. So I believe this part, this was huge manipulation. This is just normal consolidating. What we do uh, during a boring part in Bitcoin, when we break out, we test it and we go up something like that. That's what I expect for Bitcoin in the short term to do. We can also see on the bottom here that we slowly start to turn green. The green line is on top and also the green area starts to begin. So that means that the MACD also is turning positive. So for me, this is the move that we need to do in the short term. Now let's look at some more interesting charts. This is the first one, guys. This is a weekly chart. We can see that every time we have these dips, 22%, 20%, 22%, 21%, at the moment even 23% dip. These are beautiful dips. These are the dips that you should accumulate Bitcoin. These are the dips when I always tell you, stop crying, start buying. Because every time when you would have bought this dip, you would have been in profit. If you would have bought this dip, you would have been in profit. If you would have bought that dip, you would have been in profit. And I know there will be a moment I will tell you not to buy these dips anymore, but that is when the bear market will start. At the moment, we are full in a bull market. We are not in a bear market, guys. So please understand this. Then the next chart, guys. We call this one a 3.618 expansion cycle hit. Over here, you can see why. Zero line. The top was at 3.1618. Again, this is the second run, the zero line. The top was at 3.618. Then again, over here, zero line. The top was around 3.0618. Beautiful. We even went a little bit higher in 2017 because we really exploded. But over here again, the zero line and then the top was around 3.618. So these Fibonacci levels are very important levels. At the moment, zero line, 15,720, that 3.618 level is at 200,000 US dollars. So the way that we could continue at the moment would be something like this. From here, the moment that we break that previous top, really break that previous top, go up higher, higher, higher and touch that 200k level. Of course, you know that my target is between 120 and 160k. But if you look at this, then the 3.618 level is around 200k. Here it was around 63k. Here it was around 3,885, but we even expanded to 20K. So this one even grow harder. Here it was around $800. Here it was around $100. Every time we keep hitting that level, every single time again. So why wouldn't we be hitting this 3.618 level, this bull market? We set the bear market bottom over here. It is the zero line, 15,720. If we again expand to the 3.618 level, it would be a 200k bull market. Also this chart showing you exactly the same. I found it on Twitter of the Scalping Pro. We have the halving. From that halving, we go up. Halving, we go up. Halving, we went up. Halving, we will go up. All the way into 2025, guys. And 2026 will be the start of the bear market, just like 2022 was, 2018 was, and 2014 was. It is very simple. Zoom out, look at that bigger picture. You should be buying here, going all in here, because we will have another run. And to show you exactly where we are, this was the peak in 2014. When we broke that peak in 2017, 
That is when that second part of the bull market started and we went all the way to the top of 20K. We created the 20K peak. When we broke that 20K here in 2021, that is when we went to that next peak, all the way to almost 70K. We created a peak there, 70K. Now we are breaking that 70K level, 60 to 70K. What will follow? Another huge run into a new peak. So if you ask where are we at the moment, we are exactly where we were over here in 2017. Just about to break that resistance level of the previous bull market top. And if we break that level, we will get a run like this or a run like that. But we will get a run, in my opinion again, between 120 and 160k. But yes, it could even go to 200k. So if you ask me if this still is a good moment to buy Bitcoin, my answer is yes, 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 yes. I hope you really enjoy those charts, guys. I really enjoy finding these charts for you guys. Yes, the short terms, beautiful how these indicators are playing out and how you can trade this volatile market at the moment from 60K to 70K, 61 to 63, back to 61, back to 63. I believe today, again, we could go up a little bit more to 63 to fill that gap in the volume that you saw over there, guys. Long term, same story as ever. We need to zoom out. We need to look at that bigger picture. Bitcoin just surpassed the halving moment. From that halving moment, we have never gone down in history. We have only gone up in the next 12 to 18 months. And I expect exactly the same to happen this time. This time is not different. We are gonna go up between now and the next 12 to 18 months. And we will see that bull market top again beautifully in 2025. So stop crying, start buying. This indicator will tell you that the bull market top is in. This is the second indicator this week I'm talking about. Yesterday we talked about the Pi Cycle top. Today we're gonna talk about the MVRV Z-score. I'm gonna do it again from behind my screen so I can show you the charts over here. Bam. And today again an indicator that tells me when the bull market top is in, guys. Today we're gonna talk about the MVRV Z-score. As you all know, one of my favorite indicators to tell me when that we are near that bull market top, guys. Now let's take a look. How does it work? It works very simple. We have an orange line, which is the Z-score. We have the market cap, which is the black line. We have the real estate cap, which is the blue line. And we have the MVRV over here, which is the orange line. Now, it's very important to understand that every time when that orange line hits that pinkish box, that is exactly when the bull market is in, the bull market top is in. Now, for example, over here, bull market top, look, where was that orange line at that moment? bam in that pinkish box over here bull market top pinkish box bull market top pinkish box bull market top 2017 top of 20k yes that mvrv z score was in the pinkish box over here bull market top we touched that pinkish box why didn't we go higher into that pinkish box because we had a double top a distribution top this is what we call a blow of top a single top blow of top single top Blow of top, single top, blow of top, single top. A double top, less power. So yes, we could go not that high into that pinkish box. Normally, we would have gone to the level of eight, in my opinion, because it was two tops. We went a little bit lower, but we had like almost three tops in that yellow orange line. Now, where are we now? We are now at the level of two. We were already at the level of three. We were back at that level of two. So that is an indication that the bull market top is not in yet. We still need to get started. This orange line needs to go into that pinkish box for me to start exchanging Bitcoin into stable coins. Where were we at the level two in the history? Let's take a look over there. This is the level two. Level two over here, that was just in the beginning of the bull market. The level two over here, 2017, that is here, just the beginning of that bull market. Still a huge part of the run was happening after we touched that level two here the level two that was of course the uh, run in between to 14k but then again when we touched level two that was the second part of the bull market every time now again we went above two we are at level two this is just the beginning of this bull market we will go much higher so 
A perfect indicator that we talked about yesterday is the pi cycle top. The second indicator that we'll use to determine if the bull market top is in will be this MVRV Z score. You can, for example, find it on Look Into Bitcoin, but also on Glassnode or many other websites, guys. Every time when we are in the greenish area, that's the bear market bottom. That's the bottom that you need to buy. Green is good to go. Drive to the traffic light. Start to buy Bitcoin. Every time when we reach the pinkish area, that's the time to say goodbye. Sell your Bitcoin into stable coins. Very simple. When we reach with this yellow orange line, this pinkish box, you exchange your Bitcoins to stable coins. When we reach then this green box again in the far future 2026 27, that is when you start to accumulate your Bitcoins again. This is how I use the MVRV Z score. The travel tip for today, guys, how to earn Bitcoin while traveling the world. Now, that's the most asked question every time again and again to me. First of all, the first thing you need to do is be all in Bitcoin. All your savings, all your capital, everything that you own needs to be in Bitcoin while you travel. That will make and generate capital for you because Bitcoin is going up with a 50% CAGR per year, which means your capital will be growing with 50% a year. Of that 50%, of course, you can live. And if you don't use the full capital, you will be compounding your capital, which means the capital will grow even more the next year of traveling. Now, the second thing that you can do to earn Bitcoins while traveling is to trade Bitcoin. If you want to trade Bitcoin and you don't understand how to trade Bitcoin, you can still join the VIP channel now for $600 a year and join the VIPs at the Bitcoin family where you get access to our trade signals, where you get access to the Bitcoin family VIP telegram group where same-minded people talk about trading, live, blockchain, everything else. You will get access to a course where you will be taught how to trade. You will get access also, of course, to the signals group where you get signals, etc. Guys, So use our knowledge to become a better trader but trading is of course a beautiful thing to earn some extra while traveling because you only need a laptop and your iphone you don't need a fancy desk you don't need 20 screens it is all not necessary if you just want to trade a little bit to earn the third thing you can do is become an investor instead of a trader if you don't want to focus on a daily market you invest in certain projects like yesterday i invested for example in the project avalon which in my honest opinion is going to be one of the biggest web 3 metaverse gaming experience in this next bull market check that project do your own research and start to understand if you want to invest by investing in these kinds of projects very early on you will be able to take these profits among the way because they will start at a beautiful price they will create adoption they will be used by a lot of people and then the price will go up and you will be able to take your profits as an early investor if you want to check that web 3 metaverse game to go to playevlon.com really cool i will drop the link also down below and the fourth thing that you can do to earn some bitcoins while traveling is to get a job, a digital nomad job, at one of the crypto companies. I am also sometimes hiring people to do my reels or to do my editing or to do marketing or whatever it is. There is a lot of jobs in this industry. You just need to find them. If you find a cool job that really fits the knowledge that you have, then please do that job while you're traveling. You just need to spend a couple of hours every day to earn a little bit of Bitcoin every month. So that could be also a beautiful option. If you have any other option on how to earn Bitcoins while traveling, drop them down below. Everyone needs to know. Today, again, of course, answering one of the questions or kind of remark. There was one comment yesterday that said, Didi, real estate is good. I didn't say that real estate is not good. If you love real estate, then please stay invested in real estate. The common said, Didi, I've been owning real estate. I've been renting it to people. That rent uh, makes me be able to pay off my mortgage at the bank and of course also live a little bit of it. And like in a couple of years, I will be able to pay off the whole real estate, the whole uh, apartment, own that apartment and then all the money comes to me and nothing goes to the banks anymore. Yes, of course, that is how all real estate people think. And that is not bad. If you love an 8 to 16% return of investment every year on your capital and you feel a little bit more secure and safe because of real estate, please be my guest. I never said real estate is bad. I said real estate is not my perfect option because Bitcoin 
is giving me way more return of investment, 50% a year. So why would I settle for 16 or 8% a year while having all the stress of all the government bills, of all the people that rent the, the a property and that you know, need cleaning and need fixing stuff and all that shit, all those emails, all those taxes, all those calls, all those extra bills I need to pay, all of that. All of that, in my opinion, stress to maintain your real estate, to rent out your real estate, and to make six to 12 to 18% a year is not worth it if I compare it to Bitcoin. Zero stress. Just buy and hodl and let your capital grow. Well, I can still use it every day. So my capital stays liquid. Real estate, my capital is fixed. It's in that apartment or in that house. I can never use that capital or I need to lend money again from the bank with that real estate as collateral. Yeah, that's an option, but it's not really liquid because the bank needs to say yes. It's very centralized. While when I'm in Bitcoin, my capital is working for me. The same like real estate, even better. I'm making more returns investments with Bitcoin than I make with real estate. And at the same time, I'm able to spend that capital every single day. It is liquid 24-7. I can take it with me to the other part of the world. I can stay in Spain. I can spend it everywhere. I can exchange it to euros or to dollars or whatever I want. It's liquid 24 seven. I can't say that of real estate. And when I talk about flexibility as a new stability, I want to be flexible, not stuck to a location or to real estate. So that's my answer to your question. I never said real estate is bad but it's definitely not as good as Bitcoin. The second remark I want to answer is, Didi, Bitcoin is never gonna be peer-to-peer -peer cash. This comment said, yesterday I went to a rock and roll concert and I was there and I was thinking, how could I buy this ticket now with Bitcoin? I can't even buy a rock and roll ticket to Bitcoin. I can't uh, buy anything at the grocery stores. I can't buy anything anywhere with Bitcoin. So I don't think people will adopt Bitcoin in the future. Of course, I agree with you. At the moment, for our Western society, there is still no need for Bitcoin. But what about all the societies where the need is there? There, the Bitcoin adoption is growing. Venezuela, where the inflation is tremendously, thousands of percent. Those people understand the need for Bitcoin. All these countries that are now being sanctioned by the US government, you know, all these US sanctions, not being able to use a the dollar, they understand the need of Bitcoin. And our Western society in the future will also start to understand why there is need for Bitcoin. When our Western society is going to use central banks' digital cash, it will track every move you do you will understand the need for Bitcoin, and that is when most people will start to use Bitcoin. We, as early adopters, we already understand that we don't want to use central bank digital currencies, and we want to get into Bitcoin before they forbid us to get into Bitcoin. So that's very simple. Of course, there's always people that will get in too late, or they won't be able to get in because they got caught in the central bank's digital currency scheme. So that is my answer to your question. We as a family have been already unbanked for seven years. We don't own any bank accounts. We have been traveling all over the world, 42 countries, and spending our Bitcoins everywhere. So it's definitely possible, so don't try to tell me it's not possible. Of course, you can always exchange your Bitcoins to local currencies or whatever, or even spend them directly, but it is possible. And yes, in the future, when you will be forced to use a digital currency and you want to buy something that you don't want them to know of, it will be impossible and then you will need Bitcoin. That is when you will start to use Bitcoin. Then the news for the day, guys. Bitcoin will never be adopted by governments. Now, the news is telling me something completely different. As the state of Wisconsin in the United States, yes, did adopt Bitcoin because they invested more than 167 million US dollars in the Bitcoin spot ETF with the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. So yes, that government has already invested hugely in Bitcoin, $167 million worth of Bitcoin in that retirement system which means they are building up capital to be able to pay out all the retirements in this future of that part of the United States, Wisconsin. Really big news. This is the first state going public now that they invested in Bitcoin. I think many more United States will come out and tell us, hey, we just invested in Bitcoin because we think there's way better investment than gold or any other asset. And then it will also go worldwide, all governments. You know, of course, we have El Salvador, of course, we have Switzerland, of course, we have some other countries all over the world that are already invested in Bitcoin, like Bulgaria. 
But in the far future, all these governments, all these pension funds, all of these huge asset managers will understand, wow, Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century. It is the safest play that we can take with our government money, with the funds of our people, with the pension funds, because else we won't even be able to pay the pensions in the far future. That's why they call the pension gap. There is not enough money to pay out those pensions in another 10 or 20 years because more and more people will be in the need of those pensions because of their age gap. And there is not capital yet because the return on investment on the current investment they are doing is by far enough to pay for all those pensions in the future. So they need to find something new. And that new thing is the gold of the 21st century Bitcoin. So read that article, understand that yes, also now governments are accepting and investing in Bitcoin as a store of value, guys. The state of Wisconsin is the first one, $167 million worth of spot ETFs. Tell me which other governments you know that are investing in Bitcoin as well. Drop it down below. That was the news for today, guys. And ending the video again, of course, with an inspirational quote, guys. The inspirational quote for today is short but powerful. Every big change in life starts with one little step. It's one little push of one little domino brick that leads to thousands or millions of domino bricks falling, small ones and big ones. It doesn't matter. It's just that first little push of that little domino brick that will lead to all those others to fall and to create a power that it even will be able to let huge domino bricks fall. That is also how you need to look at life. Of course, you're dreaming big and you're dreaming about a complete new life, but it all starts with one little step. That first step, that first step of losing the fear to take that step. That's the first step that you need to take. If you're willing to go for all those dreams, all those big dreams in your life, or that change of life that you want, you need to start with that first little step. And that first little step is losing fear. Losing the fear of losing everything. Because you won't be losing everything. We are like conditioned, we are boxed in to think that if you take a risk, that you will lose your whole future. While we should be taught a different thing, try to step outside the box every time again and start to create a new path, a new future. And if you don't succeed, you can always go back to that stable situation that you left before you want to take a new direction. It's the same like driving a car. If you're driving a street and you turn left, that doesn't mean if that was the wrong side that that is over. The next block, you turn right, and you turn right again, and turn right again. And if you turn one more time right, you're back on that same street where you started. You drove around the block. And if the left one was good, and then to the right and left, and straight on, and right and left, that's also a new path. You decide which direction should take your life. You are feet, you have a brain, you can just direct your body into a direction that you want it to go. I hope the sound is not too disturbing, but these people also need to do their job in the morning, of course. Maybe I need to wake up a little bit more early. But it is all about that, guys. That first little step of losing fear, and then that second little step of stepping outside of the box. Do that thing that you are afraid of. Every single day, do one thing that you're afraid of, and you will be growing as a person tremendously. There is huge opportunities ahead of you, all over the place. There is millions of opportunities every day, again and again and again. But you won't see them if you keep running that hamster wheel, if you keep stuck in that vicious circle that you want to escape from, but you don't know how. The how is very simple. The first little step will lead to a huge change afterwards. But you need to be willing to take that first little step. And from that moment, everything will follow, guys. So that was the inspirational part for today. It all starts with one step, and you are responsible to take that first little step of losing fear and then stepping outside that box, guys. That was everything for today. I need to stop because they make too much noise over here. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, let me know what do you think about the charts, what do you think about everything else in this video, and also let me know if there is things that you want me to talk about as well in those videos, guys. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Wednesday and see you tomorrow on Thursday again. Bam.